Hey guys, it's Faye, and today we're going to be learning about football. So we've got something called the NFL, which is the National Football League, and they use this ball, the Duke. It's a little big. Um, I, I have small hands, so it's hard for me to hold it. Uh, let's see here if I can do it like that. You know what I mean? So this is the NFL ball. This is the professional ball. And we've also got the NCAA, which is at the college uh, level, and those are considered amateurs, even though they make a ton of money. Uh, off of their likeness, but these guys are considered, um, they usually get scholarships or something like that, or some of them have to just play uh, for free. Uh, there are 22 players on the field with these guys, uh, for both of them, if you're a professional and if you're an amateur. There's going to be 22 people on the field, 11 on offense and 11 on defense. All right, so the important positions to know on offense uh, is obviously the quarterback, the most, you know, the most well-known one is Tom Brady. Uh, offensive linemen. So there's usually five offensive linemen. There's two tackles on the left and right side. Uh, there's the guards on the left and right side. And there's a center. So that's the offensive linemen. There's usually five offensive linemen. You can throw in multiple, many more, but usually they stick to five linemen. So there's wide receivers. You can have... Two wide receivers on the field. You can have one wide receiver. You can have three in a diamond formation. Uh, yeah, you can have three in a diamond formation. Uh, then you got you can have as many as you want, but you got to stay within the eleven. Tight ends as well. Sometimes tight ends double as offensive linemen for blocking. Oh, by the way, that's what offensive linemen do. These guys block. Wide receivers catch. Tight ends can either catch or block. They have a bit of a versatility. They can do both things. Running backs usually run the ball between the linemen, or they can catch out of the backfield when the quarterback is throwing to them. In, an old, in the old days, you know, running backs usually didn't catch the ball, but now in the new era, NFL era, they're starting to be able to catch the ball and do a bunch of different things, which really helps the offense get, get different looks on the field to confuse the defense. Because really the whole point of the offense is to A, score points, and B, confuse the defense. All right, so like I was saying about the defense, we've got the linebackers. You, those guys are usually the ones that are one, two, three, or one, two. They usually call the defense. You know, communicate usually. Um, the Bucks right now have Devin White and um, Levante David. Cause I'm wearing a Bucks shirt. I like the Bucks. Uh, I would say the best linebacking tandem is probably in New England. Uh, you got Dante Hightower and um, I think Jamie Collins was there until recently. I'm not sure if he's back in New England, but those guys are really good linebackers. Uh, Luke Keekley in Carolina was a great linebacker. He just retired, which is too bad. So linebackers, I call them the, the quarterbacks of the defense. Defensive linemen. So that's the big boys up front going against the offensive linemen. The, the offensive linemen and the defensive linemen usually go right up against each other. Uh, the D linemen have the nose tackles, nose tackles, which are the two biggest people sitting right in the center or one person in the center. And then if the, occasionally you've got some defensive ends, which uh, run the which run against the the offensive line and try and get to the quarterback. Um, some D linemen that we might know, Vita Vea for the Bucks is a good one. And Dominican Sue is a a lineman right now for the Bucks. Uh, a couple other great linemen are Cam Jordan. Aaron Donald for the Rams is ridiculous. Uh, Khalil Mack is one of the best D-linemen you'll ever see. Um, so D-line consists of nose tackles, which are the big boys in the middle, D defensive ends, which are the crazy guys you know in the middle or, out, or outside. D-linemen are, are very, very wide-ranging position. Corners. Okay, so the cornerbacks are the people that run backwards and cover the wide receivers. Uh, the best corners... Uh, Deion Sanders, uh, the Bucks. Let's see here, who's our top corner? Uh, I can't think of our top corner right now. The best one I think in the league is Stephon Gilmore up in uh, New England. I like Trey Tavares White in Buffalo. He's amazing. So the cornerbacks are the guys that run backwards and uh, can intercept the passes a lot. They intercept them. Uh, Richard Sherman is another name, um, and they usually cover the wide receivers. You can tell if a cornerback is using good technique because they're moving their hips along with the, with the wide receiver. You usually try and stay with them. Um, you bracket them off. Make sure if you're a cornerback, you use that, the out-of-bounds to your advantage because you can't the receiver cannot catch the ball out-of-bounds. Out so you use the sideline if you're an outside corner. 
with, uh, then that'll help you out. Uh, last but not least, the safeties. So the safeties are kind of like the cornerbacks. They sometimes will double, but usually the safety is the very, very last resort. That means like Eric Weddle, who recently retired, and um, Earl Thomas, who's in the league right now. Those guys are safeties. That means that are there to shut everything down. If you want to try and go way down the field, your safety's got to shut it down. If you want someone to extra person to blitz on the quarterback, blitz as in chase them down, um, you know, you can bring the safety up. These guys nowadays are especially versatile. Jamal Adams is a really good safety from LSU. He, you know, the safeties are really can be used in a bunch of ways. I really like the safety and um, tight end position because it really just depends on your coordinators uh, to, to really figure out what you're going to use them for. So the offense has the offensive coordinator. That's the guy that basically designs the plays, tells everyone you should go there and makes and sees the whole entire thing to make sure that they can try and confuse the other guy. So the other guy is the defensive coordinator. And those guys are trying to stop all these players and the offensive mind. Okay, so moving on, besides the players. There's and there's the NFL franchises that we all know, like the New England Patriots, the Tampa Bay Bucks, the Detroit Lions, uh, LA Rams, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. These guys are actually businesses. They have a general manager. I wouldn't say it's exactly like Pizza Hut, but I mean the NFL is basically giant Pizza Huts running everywhere. Um, and you can really see good leadership in a franchise. Um, you can see who's a good owner. You can see who's not a good owner. So if you think of the NFL as a business, it actually kind of makes sense, really. And so there's a difference between the NFL and the college. I already talked about it, but college teams, they're usually per school. So you've got the Michigan Wolverines, the Ohio State Buckeyes, uh, the USF Bulls. Uh, the top three right now, I'd probably say, are Clemson football, uh, Alabama football, and who was it? And um, well, LSU right now is the, national, is the reigning national champion. Um, so I'm going to include them because they are the reigning national champion. But they haven't necessarily had as much success as the likes of Alabama or Clemson recently. Um, so scoring. This is very important for those who don't understand football that much. Scoring. So seven points for a touchdown. If you get into the end zone and you see the guys dancing, they probably scored a touchdown. That's worth seven points. You know, a, a game will usually end 28-21 maybe. That means there's been 7, 14, 21, 28. There's been four touchdowns to 7, 14, 21 to three touchdowns. That's a common score. We got a field goal, which the kickers are on for, the little skinny guys that come on and will make it or miss it, and the crowd goes wild regardless. So they kick field goals, and that's three-pointers. Very important. Really important for the swing of the game. And last but not least, the safety. Not the same as this safety. A safety is when the quarterback or someone is tackled inside their own end zone. Not the opponent's end zone, or that'd be a touchdown. If you're attacked in your own end zone and you go down, that's two points to the other team. And they get the ball. So you absolutely do not want a safety. That's like the worst play I've, I've, I think you could have. Beside, even besides a pick. Because with an interception, aka a pick, like... They don't necessarily score points. With a safety, they get points, and they get the ball. It's a disaster. All right. Now, each football game is actually supposed to last 60 minutes. You've got four quarters of 15 minutes um, with the television and breaks and water breaks and injuries and timeouts. It usually lasts far more than 60 minutes. Usually, you'll watch a game for three hours, I'm going to say. So... The actual football game itself might, you know, forgetting about all the uh, rule timeouts, it's about 60 minutes. With the rule timeouts, with TV, you're looking at a way longer game. And last but not least, just to shout out the state, Texas and Florida, where we are right now, go Florida, um, the state of Florida, not the University of Florida Gators. Um, Texas and Florida recruits are really big for colleges and, and um, the NFL. I mean, there's just so many people. That I can name. Obviously, other states are really big hotspots. New Jersey is kind of funny, has a lot. California has a lot. But Texas is the big, big um, hot football state. It's just, it runs in their blood. And with Florida, it runs in our blood, too. I mean, you you will see some passion with these guys. Um, Alabama and Auburn, those rivalry games are insane. Um, rivalry games 
are amazing. Um, I think they're honestly a little better than uh, in the NCAA because you feel the like passion of all the college kids coming in and everyone. So that's football explained. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know.